What's up guys? So apparently finding things by accident is what I'm good at because I'm not good at anything else. So when I was filming my last video, I, I showed you guys an ad by Lele Pons letting us know her dad was a sausage goblin. I came to his room and I saw him actually like sleeping with a man. Well, it turns out that was the second episode in a YouTube documentary series she's releasing called The Secret Life of Lele Pons. Yesterday she released episode 3, and I think about 3 weeks ago was episode 1, which was about her severe OCD. Now I didn't watch all of episode 2 because the clip I used from her video was in the beginning, so there was no reason to watch the rest. Also, it's not 2010. Telling us your dad is gay in 2020 holds no value. Now if he was black... That'd be an episode-worthy storyline. But because I had clicked on her video once, all right, maybe twice, YouTube saw that and was like, oh, I, I see you're now Lele Pond's biggest fan. Could I interest you in some of her videos? How about some of her hilarious friends? If you like Lele, you'll love Hannah. She's hilarious. Sayonara, everybody. But the next day after uploading my video, I was recommended Wait, no, it was actually when I was getting the screenshot of the second episode, I saw that she was premiering episode 3 in two days called I Have Tourette's. Now, because of how famous she is, and because we're now just finding out about something she has that's severe, I was like, alright, where is my bullshit detector? Oh yeah, right here. So I patiently waited the two days for the video to come out, and honestly, I forgot about it. But in classic YouTube fashion, they're like, hey, we know you didn't watch the first episode, or even a fraction of the second, but we just wanted to let you know that she released episode three in case you cared. And cared, I did not. But I was like, hold up, when Carmen had Tourette's, that was pretty funny. Butthole, titties, bows. Could her video have the same comedic relief I needed after hitting a small deer with my car? No, because I still feel like shit. Booge, balls, bloody vaginal belch. But as I'm watching the episode, I would say about five minutes in, my face went from... to just... Basically, I turned Asian, and I realized that I couldn't just watch this episode and not watch the first one. If you don't remember, episode one was about her severe OCD, and I'm not gonna talk shit and be like, oh, she doesn't have OCD, she's faking it. No, I'm gonna talk shit about how the documentary is made and a little bit of the OCD. So the episode starts out with a little trailer of what's to come in future episodes, like they show her dad, they or her doctor, Lele crying because of the hate comments she gets. When did it all become so, like, evil? I don't know, maybe when you lied about donating your hair that you couldn't even donate in the first place, but you still told people you donated it, even after knowing it couldn't be donated in the first place. But that's just my guess. Then, to get all of her 9 to 21 year old fans ready for this 1986 challenger launch she calls a documentary, she says this. My name is Lily Pons and I suffer from OCD, Tourette's, ADHD, and depression. She literally suffers from the four things all SoundCloud rappers are made out of, which is pretty cool. She should try and start rapping, but again, I'm not gonna talk shit and be like, she doesn't have OCD, but after the first five minutes of talking about it, they kind of just change the subject until the very end. Like, they still talk about it, but the way it's being talked about is by a doctor telling you what OCD is randomly throughout the episode. It's like they got a doctor to talk about Lele, and then they got this doctor, this other doctor, to talk about people with OCD as a whole. So, like, this doctor will say something that Lele did, and then this doctor will explain why people with OCD do that. It really makes no sense because this that lady is a, supposedly supposed to be Lele's longtime doctor, so I don't know why the fuck we're letting this guy talk. And what I mean by kinda change the subject, I mean they go from telling us Lele was so fucked up off the OCD she was stuck in a car turning on lights, to just her showing us pictures she drew as a child. When I was younger, I would just draw things that I wanted to tell them like, Mom, Dad, can you, can you kiss? Papi, I want pizza. That's what I would draw. And this is where my bullshit detector first went off, because as she's showing us these pictures, her dad's talking to us saying like, she would express herself through drawings and she would spend hours making this booklet about what happens between uh, when a girl meets a boy. Exactly what he said. And I'm like, cool, that sounds like 60% of the kids that went to the after school program I worked at. And out of that 60%, 2% of them had severe conditions like Lele did, and guess what? After spending just a week with them, I knew that without or with medication that they would not 
be where Lele is. That was a whole lot to say. I hope you understood it. So telling me your daughter expressed herself through drawings doesn't make me feel any worse about her OCD when I know kids her age who have severe conditions and can't just go to therapy to make it better. After her little Picasso session though, we start straying further from God. Now we're starting to talk about how she always wanted friends growing up but couldn't because she was ugly and dorky. I, I was really dorky and I was really ugly and um it was really lonely because I barely had any friends. Join the club, asshole. Everyone wants a lot of friends. Try wanting that and not being able to say I was ugly and dorky. This is all just some bullshit nonsense to make us feel bad about her childhood. Guess what though? No thanks, not gonna happen. I was hit by a car while riding my bike to school in the sixth grade. Now tell me, would you rather have OCD or be hit by a car while riding your bike to school in the sixth grade? because I'd rather have some OCD right about now. But her talking about being unpopular and wanting more friends trans transitions into her discovering Vine, and instead of telling us some secret behind the scenes stuff, like this documentary's title suggests it would do, <coughs> can't even talk without coughing, talk about her. We just get told things that a quick Google search would tell us. I'd honestly rather hear more about her severe OCD and how it handicaps her from doing daily tasks. But instead, her mom lets us know that Lele and King But That Backflip, though, were the most followed people on Vine. Kim Batch, he was the man with most uh, views in Vine, and Lele was the woman with most views. So other than that part being a light flex on the haters, showing us how she got popular on social media and you didn't because you didn't overcome an obstacle like OCD, she tries to say her OCD came into play when she was filming Vines and would have to do takes over and over again to get it perfect. But then, right after, she says this. Doing funny videos was a distraction to OCD, to what was going on. But like she just said, she would do takes over and over. So you weren't distracting your OCD, you were pissing that guy off doing it for the vine 50 times in a row. It's like if you don't want to trigger your OCD, maybe don't film a vine where you're riding your car into some water over and over again. Tell me again how that distracts your OCD. But when they're done letting us know that unless we can overcome severe OCD and the symptoms, we can kiss our social media dreams goodbye, they start telling us how she always wanted to be a singer and talk about that for 10 minutes. And I'm like, how the fuck is this called I have OCD, but less than half of your 30 minute episode is about OCD. Don't get me wrong, they do a good job of transitioning from topic to topic, but they shouldn't be transitioning from topic to topic. I guess it's supposed to show us what she can accomplish with severe OCD, but when you hear them talk about it, you start to realize that it was probably severe, but when she was younger. Episode one then ends with her talking to her therapist about how she's always saying other people have prettier hair than her and whatnot. Like basically she just gets jealous of people hotter than her, but then she fucking 180s that shit and says this to end the episode. When I was little, my OCD was I had to put a pillow in my head and I had to, I had to be at least one minute without breathing. What? What the fuck? Why wasn't that talked about more? Why did you have to let us know that she was the most popular person on Vine? That's like Jeff Bezos letting us know he's the most rich, richest person on earth. I want to hear more about your incredible lung strength as a child. One minute? That's beyond gnarly. But anyways, for episode two, it's all about her Tourette's. Kinda, but I'm pretty sure they confuse Tourette's in this episode with being a fucking child. I say this because it starts out with her letting us know how much she hates when her mom makes her go to the airport hours before a flight like every other person who has ever flown in the history of commercial airlining. I don't like going to the airports five hours earlier like my mom does. Then she starts talking about her mom and how she does everything for her and when I mean everything, I mean all the chores I should be doing. My mom does everything I should be doing for me. Cooking, cleaning, launch, everything. Just all the chores I should be doing. I have no idea why they added this in here. Like they even show a part where Lele was making a video with farm animals and was like, oh, I promise to clean it up and then doesn't clean it up because I guess her Tourette's disables her capability to clean up after her fucking self. It was two days cleaning with another person. You don't have an idea. God bless this woman. Lele is acting like she doesn't want to get babied, but then sexy ass Tuan right here is like, she doesn't even have a wallet. Like, doesn't own a wallet. You know who else doesn't own a wallet? A baby. Boss baby excluded. But again, like the first episode, for 14 minutes they talk about nonsense that has nothing to do with her Tourette's. They still talk about her OCD, which I 
thought was in episode one, but it's mostly just clips that contradict each other like in episode one, episode one, ep 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 episode one. Like her and a lot of people they talk to say, oh, she comes up with the best ideas and when you work with her, you know you're gonna get something done. But then at the same time, they show a clip of her manager telling her, hey, our team came up with these ideas. You just gotta pick the best one. Okay, I'm gonna read you these ideas that the team came up with. And if you like any of them, then we can develop one. But if not, we just do them from scratch. So I guess what she meant by, if I don't have an idea, you won't see me post for a week. She meant, if my team doesn't come up with an idea for me, I don't let them see sunlight for a week. There's really just a lot of, oh, people who normally have severe OCD like she has can't do what she's doing. But look at her. She's doing it. And I'm like, dog. First of all, your mom babied you so much, the first time you did laundry was at one of Dr. Phil's ranches. First time I did laundry was here, uh, I kind of didn't know what to do, so I mixed the color uh, shirts with the white shirts. It wasn't one of Dr. Phil's ranches, but it was like a place for her to do laundry and shit, like in a sense, grow the fuck up. I know she has OCD, but cleaning up after a mess you made with your friends with farm animals you obtained has nothing to do with that. You just know your mom's gonna be there to clean up after you. Also, when the fuck are we gonna talk about her Tourette's? Oh yeah, in the last eight minutes of the episode you will. So this is the part of the video where my bullshit detector went off again. She says she's dealing with tics to the point where her head hurts and she has to make these gestures to hold it in. Address it, you know, right. I and, and the more you're trying to stop it, the, the, the more you're feeling now, right? You're telling me none of her friends noticed that? Like there wasn't just one time where she was randomly just fucking flailing her arms and you weren't like, you, you hey, Pawnee, you good? You're not turning into the Hulk on us, are you? After that, it just gets worse to end the episode. They start showing us more examples of her Tourette's. And again, there's no way on God's flat fucking earth that no one has noticed this. Like, just look at this clip. So one is glitter and the other one is papa. Right, so when she gets the, uh, she hears the words, she has to move. So you're telling me she turns into Michael J. Fox when she hears the words Papa and Glitter? I'm glad she's not a girl or has a dad because that would be a fucking problem. Like here's another example. The first things that you kind of catch from her are her tics. She does a little something with her head a lot. Really? That's the first thing you notice about her? Again, I'm not legally retarded, so you can't try and pull a fast one over on someone who you think is slow. I'm sorry, but I don't believe that tick part, or at least to like the severity she's showing us it is, because all this... So one is glitter, and the other one is papa. Couldn't be kept a secret even if she tried. The OCD, yeah, but I still think it was worse when she was younger. This Tourette shit though, it's like... All right, okay, look at this. When they're ending the episode, as she's showing her friend her tics, like, she's full-on spazzing out, like she's fucking crying of embarrassment because of this. But the next second, as the doctor starts wrapping things up, nothing. Not a single twitch, movement, whatever. It's like she was that Parkinson's guy who smoked weed and it stopped him from shaking. If she genuinely had Tourette's like this shows, I don't even know how the fuck she's functioning in life. Like this girl said, that's the first thing you notice about her. What about her severe OCD that makes her do things in threes like Charlie's mom? Why are you doing everything in threes? Oh, so Charlie doesn't die. What? But that's it guys, the funniest part of this whole documentary is in episode 1 when her dad's talking to us about Lele and he's like, she can solve the most complex problems but can't even write a check or turn on a light. And I'm like, is your daughter Lele Pons or Stephen Hawking? Because that's who you just described. I was also trying to find a word for what she's doing. I was thinking of the word dramatization, but then I found this comment asking if this was real or fake. Reasonable question, by the way. But it had two replies. The first one was basically a summary of what the trailer was, but the second one was what my below average IQ was trying to communicate to you. It's called emotional manipulation to young impressionable kids. Right there, uh, Lauren33, that is exactly what they're, what she's doing. If you are over the age of, I would say, 16, go ahead and watch it for yourself. If you are under 16 and you happen to make it this far in the video, I have two words for you. Peace. On Christmas, I'm building with wise men. Round the burning bush. On eBay pushing. How much can I get for Reggie Bush's Heisman?